Hey guys, what's going on, Scats? Uh, again, super excited to be here today because we've got more Dragonflight Alpha information. Um, today we're looking at the data mine stuff for Warrior. Uh, these are data mine spell changes and talent tree speculation. So again, this is not a release of the Warrior tree or anything like that. This is just the things that they're seeing through data mining that point to likely things being in the talent trees or spells that are coming back. And with Warrior, there's a ton of room to improve, uh, both from the tank situation as well as some of the DPS. So let's hop in. Uh, one of the best things here is that over here on Wildhead, they actually have my favorite race ever, the Tuscar. It's front and center, and that's always a good time. So that being said, I'm going to turn the music down slightly here because it got too loud. There we go. And let's go ahead and hop in. Now, again, this is alpha information. Um, most of the spells they've picked up the reason they're suggesting was because they say it requires warrior in the tooltip, which typically points to something for a warrior, specifically for a talent tree, or some sort of, you know, other system that would require you to be a warrior. Um, as far as coveted abilities coming back, it looks like punishment is possible. This is the one that made it so your execute was usable above 80% health and 20% health uh, through... Uh, whatever the actual um, ability was called uh, with the Venthyr. I don't remember, honestly, because I hated playing Venthyr Warrior, but I did enjoy that Execute was available, you know, above and below, uh, you know, a certain threshold, which was great. Uh, Inspire Bastion is also looking to be returning, uh, which is great, because this is an incredible ability. It gives you good, strong burst, and it actually replaces something super boring, uh, I think, so pretty awesome. Now, as far as general talents go here, these are things that don't fit specifically into any tree spec-wise. So it's very possible that these will be just in general on that general tree. Um, a bunch of these are, you know, potential repeats. So they'll probably be sitting in an actual talent tree, so do keep that in mind. Um, so we do see things like adaptive teachings, which is just base versatility, uh, crit chance here from a couple of these. But you do have other things here like Brutal Vitality, which is a percentage of damage you deal adds to your active ignore pain. Uh, this is currently a conduit, so that's pretty decent. Uh, Berserker Shout, go Berserk removing and granting immunity to Fear Sap and Incapacitate effects for 6 seconds. Um, interesting, it's called Berserker Shout and not Berserker Rage. Um, so pretty cool there. At least that's a different. Uh, crushing Force. Damage of Shield Slam and Slam increased by 25%. Uh, cacophonous Roar, Intimidating Shout lasts longer, essentially. It just takes 200% more damage before it breaks. Uh, concussive Blows, the cooldown of Pummels reduced by one second and increases interrupting, or sorry, successfully interrupting an enemy increases your crit chance by 5% for 10 seconds. Can only happen once every 30. Um, anything that promotes interrupting is great, especially whenever it gives you a bonus after the fact. That's great. It's always good. Uh, Dauntless Duelist. This is currently on uh, one of the Venthyr Soulbind trees. I believe it's Nadja. Um, first enemy you damage in combat is marked as your adversary. You deal extra damage to them. They deal less damage to you. You can only have one adversary at a time. That buff that you put on them, or that debuff rather, uh, lasts permanently. So, pretty amazing. Uh, then we got just some basic, you know, 3% parry, 2% mastery, dual wield damage, stamina, and stuff like that. Um, execute attempts to finish off a foe. Looks like execute could potentially be, uh, you know, one of the tops of the trees. Probably, I would assume, probably arms. That would make sense. Uh, exploit the weakness. Tactician's chance to trigger is increased as if you spent 260% more rage. That is oddly specific. Um, very oddly specific there. Uh, movement speed increased by 4%, big deal. Uh, again, just an armor, crit chance buff. Uh, Frenzy Flurry, while using two-handed swords or axes, your crit damage is increased by 100%, and your execute has a 100% increased critical strike chance. Uh, that is really interesting. Um... But this also says requires one-handed melee weapon. Excuse me just a moment here. Okay. Uh, then we've got Impale. Increases crit damage by 10%. 
Um, you know, nothing too big there. Uh, let's see, we got Furious Blows. That's just your basic Bloodthirst Slam, Shield Slam, Whirlwind damage increase. Honed Reflexes, reducing the cooldown of Pummel, Shield Slam, Overpower, Bloodthirst. Uh, inspiring Presence gives you extra health off a of Rallying Cry. One-Handed Weapon Spec increases Leech by 10%. That's kind of weird. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably for Prot. Overwhelming Rage, extra Rage Cap, pretty sweet. Pain and Gain. You take any damage you heal for a percentage of your health. I believe Pain and Gain uh, is basically the... Uh, the one conduit we have now that isn't played a whole lot, but is actually really strong for tanks. Um, this is definitely great free healing. Uh, quick thinking, for some reason, just extra haste. Uh, increases weapons damage. Uh, extra armor. Seismic reverberation. This is currently, I believe, a legendary effect. If Whirlwind hits three or more targets, it hits them an additional time for 100% damage. Uh, arms, it's 80%, and then prot, it's 75 uh, sharpened Blades, while using two-handed swords or axes, your crit chances increase by 20%, your executes to 10% increased crit chance. It may be that this is actually the talent, and Frenzied Flurry is something with, like, a huge empowerment buff, because this seems way too strong and way too good. Um, whereas Sharpened Blades seems realistic and actually potentially okay. Uh, Shattering Throw, throw your weapon at the enemy. Uh, you know, breaking that heals up to 1,000% demolition. I don't know what that means. 500% increased damage to absorb shields. I'm assuming that demolition is another talent somewhere. Uh, Signet of Tormented Kings. Very popular uh, Lego right now. Uh, siphoning Strikes. Get extra leech. Spell Reflect for protection. Uh, raise your shield, reducing magic damage taken, and reflect a spell. Uh, arms and Fury, raise your weapon. Oh, it just raise your weapon. Doesn't say requires a shield. That's interesting, that's cool. Uh, Storm of Steel, Ravager lasts 30% longer. Storm of Steel, when an enemy dies during Blade Storm, extend its duration by 10,000% seconds. Alright, so that's definitely a tooltip error there. Um,. But I could definitely see Bladestorm going a little bit longer if you get like a you know a kill like a half second longer or something. Uh Thunderclap. Um Yep, there you go. That makes perfect sense. Have that as a talent somewhere because you don't always necessarily need it. Uh Titanic Throw throws your weapon at the enemy. Probably just replacing heroic throw. Two-handed weapon spec increases your weapon damage dealt by two-handed weapons by five percent. Valor and victory, another one of those random versatility buffs. Um, not a ton that's super exciting here. These are mostly just, you know, little increases here and there. Uh, with a few things that are definitely not, uh, definitely not listing what they're actually going to do. They're definitely placeholder values. Um, speculated Arms Warrior Talents here. Uh, Barbaric Training looks like increased damage to Slam and Whirlwind. Makes sense. It's kind of the bread and butter there. Uh, Bloodborne. Damage of Deep Wounds, Rend, and Thunderous Roars bleed effects increase by 15%. Uh, don't know what Thunderous Roar is. Uh, Bloodletting, Deep Wounds, Rend, Thunderous Roar lasts longer. Blunt Instruments. When using two-handed maces or pole arms, the damage and duration of Colossus Smash is increased by 30%. Now, that is very interesting because that is a huge difference from running, you know, the sword specialization there, which improves your execute. Um... That is pretty sweet. Getting extra Colossus Smash time is really strong. Uh, exhilarating Blows. Mortal Strike is a 20% chance to instantly reset its own cooldown. Pretty sweet. Fatality. Uh, your Mortal Strike abilities against enemies above 30% health have a very high chance to apply Fatality. When an enemy falls below 30% health, your next execute inflicts 100% attack power physical damage per stack. Um, approximately 8 procs per minute. That's pretty neat. Extra damage, stacking damage definitely improves a single target, um, which I I know that ARMS right now has some issues with its, you know, perceived strength in a raid, and that could definitely, uh, definitely improve it for sure. Healed by Vengeance, you're healed for 30% of the damage dealt by Deep Wounds. That's great. 
that's really, really great. This is also currently a, uh, a conduit, I believe. Improved sweeping strikes. Longer sleeping strikes. Can't go wrong there. Uh, when Bladestorm ends, Whirlwind and Cleave deal X increased damage for 9 seconds. Um, this is pretty normal. This is one of the talents we have now, I believe. Uh, and then a simple surge, execute, extends the duration of Colossus Smash. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. That gives you a targeted execute range. Uh, for Fury Warrior here, we've got a little, couple little gems here. Uh, Cadence of Vegeta, Vegeta. Uh, Bloodthirst increases your haste by 1%, stacking up to five times. Can't get enough haste as Fury. Uh, Cold Steel Hot Blood, a lot of people have been calling for the return of this talent, and it looks like we might actually be getting it. Pretty sweet. Uh, Deafening Crash increases Siege Breaker's damage by 30%, and duration by 3 seconds. So that's great there, Siege Breaker is always good. Uh, Depths of Insanity, 30% longer Recklessness. Uh, Focus and Chaos, your auto attacks have no penalty to hit from dual wielding during Enrage. Um... Not sure exactly what that means, to be honest with you. Uh, improved Bloodthirst damage, Raging Blow gets two charges, chance to reset its CD. Uh, improved Rampage, Rampage causes you to become enraged and your Rampage damage is increased. Enraged regen lasting longer, Juggernaut, uh, this is currently a conduit here as well. Execute increases damage dealt by Execute, uh, stacking up to 99 times. Onslaught extends the duration of Enrage by 4,000 seconds. Yeah, that's a placeholder. Uh, that is definitely a placeholder. Uh, and generates 0, 0 times 25% uh, more Rage. Raging Armaments. Raging Blow gains an extra charge. Vicious Contempt. Bloodthirst deals 18% increased damage to enemies who are below 35% health. Just gives you even more Execute. Um, you know, can definitely just really push into that niche right there and as far as prop warrior goes not nowhere near as much prop there normally isn't uh annihilator your auto attacks deal an additional bit of damage and have a 20 percent chance to reset your shield slam that's good that's really good uh armored to the teeth you gain strength equal to 10 percent of your armor this promotes item level over everything nothing wrong with that uh improved shield block shield block has two charges that's pretty standard you're gonna end up having to spec that anyway uh, strategist, Devastate, Thunderclap, Revenge, and Execute a 30% chance to reset your Shield Slam. Uh, I'm okay with Shield Slam. I like Shield Slam. The Wall, Shield Slam, gets you more Rage. Produces the on a Shield Wall. Current Legendary, still strong. Unbreakable Will, Shield Wall gets an additional charge and grants 50% of its effect to all party members. Uh, that is incredibly powerful. Super, super good. And then Unurbing Focus, Last Stand increases your Rage Gen by 30%. Um, so these are just what we're seeing so far. Um, these class changes that are down here at the bottom that you can look through at your ledger are just the more, uh, you know, numbered and showing you exactly what modifiers changed. Um, no reason to go through it again. If you're interested in that information there, the Wildhead article will be linked in the description. Um, but I've got to say, Warrior looks pretty promising there. I hope to see a lot more for protection. Uh, I'm very interested in playing a Protection Warrior in Dragonflight, as it is my favorite tank in the game. Um, so hopefully I will actually be able to do that. Uh, so make sure you leave a like on the video, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. And hopefully, the next time I catch you, it'll be in-game, in the alpha. See you again. Bye-bye.